Hey guys, how's it going? Kevin Cleary here with a knife video for you. Today we're taking a look at the Arno Bernard Eye Mamba. This will be my full review and discussion. Uh, this is a really, really interesting knife for a couple of reasons. Uh, first off, Arno Bernard is well known for making these beautiful fixed blades, and I will have some to share with you in the not too distant future. Steve from Thunderbird Gear, who supplied this knife, is going to send me a few of their fixed blades to share with you. And they are astounding. They're just beautiful with great quality. And so really, really impressive stuff just all around from Arno Bernard. And I will say that this knife is no exception. Um, I do want to comment a little bit on why this stands out to me as something a little bit special and perhaps a little bit unique and, and enters to a, into a fairly small pocket in the knife industry. And that is, you know, this knife strikes a really, really cool and appealing balance. All right, this is not a traditional knife, but it definitely has a bit of a traditional feel to it. Partially that's because of the materials, but the shape of the inlay and the overall design doesn't feel like a huge departure and, and definitely seems to carry some history with it. While at the same time, this is different and interesting and certainly, um, completely contemporary in terms of performance and approach. And so for all of those reasons, I think this stands out as something interesting and unique that's going to be appealing to a lot of people. Now, is it the most perfect thing that's ever been conceived in, in all the knife world? You know, probably not, but it is really, really special and for a number of reasons. So uh, first off, let me start off with size and weight. And this comes in at just under seven inches. And I mean just under. So it's a really nice, you know, sort of in a really good sweet spot for everyday carry, which I think is right where you want to be. If you're going to enter into the market, you want to come out with something that is, you know, in that really safe middle ground because you don't want to be putting a lot of the market off by either being way too big or way too small. So I think that's a really nice option. I did give a quick rundown on size in my, um, in my first impressions video as well as in my comparison. So I'm not going to rehash all of that. I'll just get you to go watch one of those. But, you know, essentially we're dealing with around an eight inch folder, three and a half inch blade. It's just a little under three and a half inches. The handle is around four and a half inches and the whole thing weighs in at four ounces, which is really, really nice. The grip area is three and three quarters. So it's a really safe place to be. And, and it's right, it's hitting all of those numbers that most of us are going to look for in an EDC. And at the very least, very few people are actually going to be put off by. All right. And in terms of feel in hand and carry in pocket, this is great. Okay. This is, this is comparable easily to any of the nicest folders around to use and carry or fit in your hand. So uh, that's the first thing I've got to say. I think they did a really nice job of, of hitting a size and weight that's going to be widely appealing. They made this knife big enough to be quite useful uh, without going over the top. So the, the first, the first effort here in terms of size and weight or the choices around size and weight, I am think it really, really nice. It's a great size, comfortable uh, and capable. Now, the blade is the first point that we generally look at here. And that's what we're going to look at right now. First of all, let me say, I think this is a really nicely balanced blade. When it comes to design, I talk about, you know, I, I mean something a little bit different about balance, but this blade, it's clean, it's plain, but it's got enough going on that it creates some interest. So we've got a nice hollow grind with beautiful grind lines that are pretty visible there. I love that. Crown spine, really nicely balanced in terms of right, carrying some material out to the tip, making this durable and reliable. We've got this really nice, it's sort of a modified nail nick more so than a fuller, but I guess we can call it a fuller. What's great about it is it's, it's built the same way as a nail nick. So there's actually an angle here. Okay. So they're coming in on an angle this way into the blade so that you get this nice spot for either a thumb roll or a spidey flick. I really, really like that feature. The other thing I have to comment on and really commend them for is they've done the thumb, thumb ramp. They they dispense with the crown spine and switch over to flat with a little bit of jimping, which again, that's exactly what you want to see. In terms of the plunge grind here, there's plenty of space. You can see that maybe a hair of a fraction 
of a smile there, but certainly nothing to complain about. All right, so overall, we've got a nicely balanced blade. The design is really good. The hollow grind, I, you guys know I love hollow grinds. This is 20 thousandths behind the edge, so it's going to slice really, really nicely. The blade stock is an eighth of an inch thick, so you're not, you know, it's it's not doing that thing that some hollow grinds will do where you end up, once you once you kind of get to here, it becomes a problem. There's, there's just not enough blade stock for that to happen. It's enough blade stock that I'm confident in its toughness, but it's not so much that it becomes a problem when slicing. So really nicely balanced blade. Now the last point we need to bring up is in regards to the steel, which is RWL 34, which is essentially 154 CM. So that's uh, like the powdered metallurgy version of uh, 154 CM. And that's a good steel. It's not something that, and, and here's the only issue I have. In terms of performance, I'm not going to complain. I think it's a well-balanced, appropriate steel for uh, a nice everyday carry knife. However, this knife, I think, is in a different class. Or, or could, you know, yeah, it's in a different class. Guys, this is expensive. It's unique. It's going to be a little bit hard to get. And with a knife like that, I would like to see something a little adventurous, a little dramatic, okay? Is it necessary? No. But do I kind of wish this had, I don't know, S90V or, you know, some steel that, you know, we don't hear a lot about that maybe isn't used in a lot of folders? That would be nice just from a, a, a uniqueness standpoint, just to, to take the, the specialness of this knife and crank it up one more little notch. All right, that's that's a pretty weak complaint, guys, because RWL, RWL34 is a really, really nice steel and the performance is absolutely fantastic. So, you know, it's it's that's a very that's a very nitpicky point to make. But I and and on any knife except for a knife that costs five hundred and fifty dollars, I wouldn't be making that point at all. Let's move on from this very attractive and very functional blade to the action. So lockup and deployment on this knife is achieved primarily, I guess, through a flipper tab and a titanium frame lock with a steel lock bar insert and over travel stop. I think you can probably peek in behind and see that right there. All right, and you can obviously see the screw that's holding it on there. And that's, you know, that's pretty much what we're used to. Uh, I've already mentioned it, but I'll add at this point that it is a very satisfying spidey flick with this knife. Uh, I absolutely love that feature for sure. Um, so in terms of enjoyment, smoothness, ease of use, the action is absolutely on point. It's all that you would expect from a modern high-end titanium frame lock. All right, everything is really well done, and I can't complain about the action in any significant regard. All right, except for one very, again, this is a, a small point, but I think it's it's worth considering, and that is, you know, I this to me is a special knife. This to me is an interesting knife. It's one that stands out and I wish there were something unique about the pivot. All right, the decorative screw certainly helps and I really like that kind of industrial flair that it has added to, you know, the very traditional looking Mammoth 2 scales or, or other scales. It really, all of the scales about, wow, Sorry about that, I'm knocking over the, the tripod, but all of these do have a bit of a traditional connection to them. All right, I wouldn't say they're strictly modern traditionals. In fact, I would say they're not that at all, but combining this with the decorative pivot is really nice. So um, I'm curious as to whether or not there'll be colors available. Uh, I guess we'll see. It looks to be just a steel pivot. That doesn't mean you can't anodize or do other things, um, but I wish there were something unique here, something that I could ooh and awe ah over, something I could brag to my knife enthusiast friends about. You know, whether they did roller bearings, whether they did, you know, dual or triple row ceramic bearings, uh, or even putting this on phosphor bronze, you know, getting this on phosphor bronze washers and dialing it in to such an extent that it had the exact same action that it has now, right? All of those would be unique features of the knife. The way it's done, it basically has the same, you know, titanium frame lock construction that every Kaiser and every ZT and every Riyadh and Wii and, and a million and one other titanium frame locks have. So is it good? Is it smooth? Is it enjoyable? Without question. It, it works really, really well. 
but I just would like it to have something unique. And, and I know you could push back as saying, you know, Kevin, why reinvent the wheel? Why be unique just for the sake of being unique? And, and I don't have a reason other than this feels like a unique knife in many other respects. All right. Uh, so the action is very good. It's exactly what you would expect. You know, you pick up a knife that costs this amount of money and you expect it to feel like, like this knife feels, okay? Just smooth and clean and very dialed in. The detent is a little on the soft side, but it's, it's, right where it needs to be, right? I wouldn't I wouldn't want to make any changes in the actual functioning of this in any way, but some mechanical changes could possibly be welcome. All right. Now, uh, I, I, am I being unfair in that? I think so. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm happy to accept that I am being a little unfair, uh, but I do kind of wish they'd done something a little bit different or creative with the uh, with the mechanisms here. Finally, let's move on to the handle. And this particular handle, along with all of them that are currently available, uh, is going to have some kind of inlay. Now, there are a couple of inlays that I happen to know about, or lack of inlays that I happen to know about that I want to hit on first. Um, I did get a, a response from Arno Bernard that they do plan to do uh, plain versions of this, so no inlay at all. I suspect those will be cheaper. I can't speak to that for sure because it's, you know, it's not a thing yet. You can't go find it on their website or anything, but uh, it is going to be a thing in the future. The other thing I know, and, and, and here's the Canadian connection for you, I guess, they're going to do uh, maple burl on here, and Thunderbird Gear, to my knowledge, is going to be the only place that you can find that uh, Canadian maple burl, and that, I think, is pretty cool. Um, so if you want that, you're going to have to talk to Steve, and I can't, I don't know for sure, but I think you could pre-order that from him right now. If I'm wrong about that, I apologize. Uh, I will try to comment below whether or not that's a thing. Um, but at some point in the near future, if you're watching this video a few months after I made it, then it's probably possible by the time you're watching to pre-order a Maple Burl inlaid version of this, which I think is, yeah, pretty spectacular. All right, now, back to the actual components and performance of this handle. All right, titanium fray block, this one happens to have mammoth tooth inlay, which is beautiful. Not what I'd pick. I tend to steer away from the really high-end fancy materials, but I can appreciate the beauty of it. Uh, nicely milled clip, and this is one of those combo clips, okay? It is a milled titanium clip, but it's essentially a milled spring clip. It works really, really well, and it doesn't create any hot spots in hand. Uh, that's another point that we ought to be making at this point. I guess first we'll finish construction. So you can see there's just the two screws here. We've got a standoff here at the back and then the pivot screw as well as a stop pin. Uh, so that's the, so very simple construction here, titanium slabs. Um, in hand, this feels really good. I mean, it's comfortable. It's, it's, you know, everything is chamfered well. And so, you know, the feel in hand is very nice. Is it, it's not the same as, I don't know, say a, a, an 8010 or perhaps maybe something with 3D machine scales. That's not quite the same, but in terms of a folding knife with titanium frames, it, for ta with a titanium <sighs> construction, it's very, very nice. All right, I have no ergonomic complaints. Uh, and the one thing that I did see, I, whenever I get a knife that's sort of under eight inches, I get worried that I'm not gonna have enough real estate that it's gonna be too small for my hand. This is absolutely not. It feels really, really good. I will comment again, since we're talking about construction, I like the decorative pivot. I like the, the little pop of color. And I think these two little silver sort of pops will really stand out on the totally plain tie version, which I think will be really, really cool. I also think, you know, if you picture, I maybe I'm steering you totally astray, but I suspect a, a burl, a maple burl will be sort of a light color and that'll be, again, very, very appealing. Blasted finish on the titanium, which again is grippy and nice, uh, good retention. I, you know, there's just no real ergonomic points to complain about uh, on this knife. And uh, I guess I should point out as well, the way they've done the relief cut there is pretty nice and it's a little thicker. I tend to be a fan of a thicker relief cut that is sort of the weak point on titanium frame locks. And so it's nice to see them uh, do something a little stronger. And the, the tension is not unbearable, which 
uh, again, I think is is really well done. They've got it really dialed in there. Let's go ahead and get to some comparisons. Now, there's not a lot out there that compares easily to this. An obvious comparison and one that we've already done on this channel is the Sebenza 31. You know, you could have a any Sebenza with inlays, the 21, uh, possibly a Menandi. It does remind... An, a number of people said it reminded them of the Menandi, and I guess it does remind me a little bit. However, this is a proper size. I'm, I have less than no interest in a Menandi because it's just too small for me to care about. Um, all of these, I think, are pretty comparable. They all offer something simple, but something very well put together and, and uh, awfully high end. I will say this, I haven't looked into the warranty for these much, but they are made in South Africa, which means at the very least, the shipping back and forth is gonna be a bit of a heartache. Uh, that would be one considerable um, element to think about when you're looking at you know a comparison between these two, all right? Otherwise, I think, yeah, the, the Sebenza stuff is quite comparable uh, as sort of a, a, a hard-use gentleman's folder is kind of where I would class um, the, the Sebenzas, and I would consider this almost the same thing, maybe a little lighter use. I do want to throw in uh, another couple titanium frame locks or, you know, titanium, high-end titanium knives. Here's the Riot Torrent, one of my favorite knives of all time. Um, obviously, this is bigger and this is different, okay? But I thought I'd throw it in there just because the action on here is spectacular and offers something pretty well, you know, similar in quality. If, you, if you're looking at this going, Kevin, you know, there's never a time in my life where I'm going to be spending $560 on a folding knife, then that may offer you an alternative. Another alternative that I want to throw out there that has action and fit and finish that's really on par with this knife or even the knife I just showed you, the Riot, uh, the Real Steel Lynx. And that may seem insane. The Lynx goes for like 230 bucks. And I've said this in my review, I've said it in other comparisons. In terms of feel and performance per dollar spent, this is a really, really hard knife to beat. Like it feels like a thousand dollar knife. All right, that's why I threw that in there. Now the other knives I wanna throw in are, I'm gonna throw in because of their sort of prowess as nearly perfect EDC folder. So the Benchmade uh, Super Freak is a really, really great everyday carry knife, really good size, really good balance. Uh, and you can see, and I, and I would say in terms of, you know, filling that EDC role almost perfectly, the uh, the iMamba would be certainly comparable. I'm going to throw a Rat Model 1 in here, more for size comparison than anything else, just in case you haven't, aren't too knowledgeable about some of the other knives we've looked at. Uh, that's not comparable at all. I'm only throwing it in there as a size reference. The other knife I would throw in is a Para 2. Again, more for a size reference and for that connection to, you know, people argue about this being the most perfect EDC out there. Uh, and this is easily comparable in that regard. Like this is a really, really ideal everyday carry knife if you like to spend significant amounts of money on your everyday carry knife. All right, now that we've moved through all of those comparisons, what are my overall thoughts? Well, my overall thoughts are Arnold Bernard builds beautiful knives with fantastic craftsmanship and high utility. And guess what? They have done that with this particular knife. It's beautiful, it's functional, it's easy to carry, it has a great blade, it has great action. You know, they're really, the, the nitpicks that I made are really nitpicks, okay? And, and um, most of the, this is a very, very well done knife. It's easily comparable with things that cost more. You know, if you put this on a table with, you know, kind of all the popular high-end folders out there, the Shiro's and the the Spectres and the Arius's and the, the Sabenzes and the Hinderers and, you know, the Riot stuff from Liang Ma or Brian Nadeau, you know, this would hold its own with any of those great high-end folders, right? It really would. It's a beautiful piece. It's elegant. And, and I think this is going to appeal to people who love the, who, who like that somewhat traditional connection, right? Who who don't want something like this because it's just too out there, all right? Who don't want something like this because it's just too not a knife, all right? This is very much a folding knife. It, it 
her sort of has all the traditional styling cues of a folder, even including a nail nick, and yet it functions like a sort of modern tactical titanium frame lock, which is really, really cool and very, very welcome. Thank you so much to Steve over at Thunderbird Gear for sending this along. Go and check him out, guys. Uh, thank you to Arno Bernard for uh, answering my questions and for making such a beautiful knife and thank most importantly all of you for watching your continued support and continued viewership is uh, something that I greatly appreciate so there you go guys that's my take on the Arno Bernard I Mamba great knife absolutely beautiful we'll talk to you soon